Hello everybody! Welcome to our worship celebration. Good morning church, good morning Compress family. Happy Resurrection Sunday! Today God has a wonderful and anointed message for all of us. Today is our Resurrection Sunday. It's also our Lord's Supper Sunday. Let us commemorate what Christ has done on the cross for us 2,000 years ago. Indeed, God has a wonderful message for all of us. But before I share the Word of God, let us join our praise and worship team and let us worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let us worship Jesus with all our hearts. Amen? Let us worship Him. Good morning, Compraise family. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Today, we are celebrating the greatest day in history and that is the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that's why we have all the reason to rejoice because our God is alive Jesus our Savior is alive hallelujah the greatest day in history Death is beaten, you have rescued me. Sing it out, Jesus is alive. The empty cross, the empty grave. Life eternal, you have won the day. Shout it out, Jesus is alive. He's alive. As you are mine. Amen. Endless joy and perfect peace. Earthly pain finally will cease. Celebrate. Jesus is alive.
day and what a glorious day Lord Jesus thank you thank you Jesus for what you have done for us we continue to worship you and let me first read to you Philippians chapter 2 verse 11 to 7 rather he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death even death on a cross therefore god exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name that at the name of jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father amen hallelujah thank you jesus thank you for what you have done on the cross for us two thousand years ago you became obedient to the father even to the point of death hallelujah we love you lord we will always remember and we will always cherish the cross what you have done for us praise you jesus hallelujah the moon and stars they wept the morning sun was dead the savior of the world was fallen his body on the cross his blood poured out for us the weight of every curse upon him one final breath he gave as heaven looked away the sun of god
sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah the lamb was overcome we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah the lamb was overcome for your word for us today prepare our hearts Lord as we listen to your word through Pastor Dom's Pakulor praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord thank you Jesus well thank you for joining us today happy resurrection Sunday indeed Christ has risen from the grave he is alive and he is with us today this is again your friend Pastor Doms bringing you the good news of the Word of God. Yes, Happy Resurrection Sunday, and this is also our Holy Communion Sunday. So I ask you to prepare your elements, the bread and the juice. And at the end of our Word, let us join together in commemorating what Christ has done on the cross for us. Amen? So let us pray. Let us commit this to the Lord. Our Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, that today we can join together in celebrating your goodness, your faithfulness. Indeed, Lord, you are alive. Thank you, Jesus, that you are here with us today. Lord, I pray that you bless your word, that as I share your word, I pray that you will speak to us in a mighty way. Thank you, Jesus. In your name I pray. Amen and amen. Well, today is our Happy Resurrection Sunday. Malagayang Pasko ng Pagkabuhay. Isa sa pinakamagandang katutuhanan or mensay ng Kristiyano is Christ's Resurrection, ang pagkabuhay muli ng ating Panginoong Yesus. Marahil maraming pagkakaibang katuruan ang mga Christian churches or denominations ngayon Subalit nagkakaisa sa katotohanan ito na kung saan ang ating Panginoong Yesus ay muling nabuhay. Si Kristo ay muling nabuhay. So today, let us celebrate. Let us join our hearts together as we celebrate God's goodness. Yes, it's worth celebrating. It's worth commemorating. It's worth sharing this truth to other people. You know, others call this the Easter Sunday, but we prefer to call it Resurrection Sunday. Amen? You probably heard a lot of messages about Resurrection Sunday. So today, let's talk about the blessings 
of Christ's resurrection, the blessings of Christ's death and resurrection. Let's read our passage in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 15, verses 3 and 4. It says here, For what I receive, I pass on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that He was buried, that He was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures. Praise the Lord for the reading of His Word. Today, I'll share to you about the blessings of Christ's death and resurrection. Bakit kailangang mamatay sa krus ang ating Panginoon at bakit kailangan niya muling mabuhay? Ano-ano ba ang mga pagpapalang na papaloob sa kanyang kamatayan at muling pagkabuhay? So today, yan po ang ating tatalakayin. Number one blessing is total forgiveness. Amen? Total forgiveness, blessings, and truth number one is that we believe that we are totally forgiven. This is the first thing Jesus said on the cross. Luke 23 verse 34 says, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. First truth from the cross, first blessing that God wants us to know is total forgiveness or complete forgiveness. You know, Jesus here talking to his Father in heaven, when he saw the crowd, okay, he said, Father, forgive them. As if he is saying, Lord, forgive these people. Forgive them. I am willing to carry all their sins. I am willing to suffer for their sins. And he is there on the cross at that very moment. This is the message of the cross. Forgiveness. The word forgive in the Greek means to remove the guilt. Amen? To remove the guilt. Now, let's admit it. Each time we committed a sin, each time we disobey God, each time that we disobey His will, there is that feeling of guilt. Amen? There is that feeling of guilt playing in our hearts, in our minds. Yung bang nakokonsensya tayo. And you don't know, okay, where this feeling of guilt will bring you and me. Okay? Sometimes, this leads to embarrassment. Kahihiyan. Okay? Sometimes this leads to sickness and diseases. It will manifest in our physical body. Sometimes this guilt feeling leads us to backslide. Okay? Yung bang nahiya ka kay Lord, nahiya ka sa tao, at sa sarili mo, at sasabihin mo, aayusin ko muna sarili ko. And then you begin to withdraw. To the point that you will harden your heart and you try to hide your sin, and sometimes that guilt will lead you to another sin until, you know what, you are drawn by your sins away from the Lord. And it becomes a stronghold. Ano ba yung stronghold? Ito yung strong ang hold na mga kasalanan. Okay? Ito po yung talagang nasa yung puso na at ito'y mahirap tanggalin that sometimes you need deliverance for you to be delivered from all the sins. Okay? But guilt is still haunting you. But don't you know that God can forgive you? Don't you know that God sent His Son Jesus Christ to die on the cross, shed His blood for you and for me to cleanse us from all our sins? There is good news, friends. Today, Know this truth, that Jesus came, went to the cross. He died to pay the penalty of our sins, past, present, and future. He is resurrected to appropriate forgiveness for all of us. At nais kong sabihin sa iyo, that no matter how sinful you think you are, how complicated 
yung mga kasalanang nagawa mo, God can forgive you. Amen, church? Only Jesus can forgive us of our sins. The blood of Jesus that shed on the cross cleanses us from all our sins. Sabi nga ng Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus did not only remove from us the feeling of guilt, but what we've actually done wrong. He removes everything, all clean as white as snow. And again, in Psalm 103 verse 12, it says here, the Bible says, He removes our sins as far as the east is from the west. He removes our transgressions from us. Actually, the biblical word for forgiveness is justified. We have been justified. Okay? This doctrine of justification or total forgiveness The word justified, if we divide this into three syllables, okay? Just, if, I. Meaning, just, if, I never sin. Amen? That's what total forgiveness means. Remember, Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God, Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Justified through faith. That's why we have peace with God. We have been reconciled with God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yan po ang ginawa ng ating Panginoong Yesus doon sa Cruz. And that is the blessing that we have right now as Christian believer. And I'd like you to know that you have been forgiven. Jesus on the cross took all our sins. He suffered and died for it. So today, you will receive total and complete forgiveness and be reconciled back to God. Yes, in Christ, you are totally forgiven. That's why, you know, Jesus said to the woman caught in adultery, He said, go and sin no more. Alam nyo, hindi dahil alam mong na tayo pinatawad na ng Diyos. And so we will abuse the truth or that blessing. of committing sin, okay, every day. The Bible said in Romans chapter 6, verse 11 to 12 says, Count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body. Mga kapatid, don't let sin reign in your heart, in your body. You have been forgiven. You have been cleansed. Be thankful to God that God, you know, suffered all the consequences of our sins. So every time we think that God has already forgiven us, all the more we need to come to Him. We need to draw near to Him and be thankful to Him and worship Him and say, Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you have done on the cross for me. Thank you for the forgiveness of my sins. And now you can come to the Lord as intimate as you can, knowing that He has already forgiven you. Mga kapatid, the blessings of Christ's death and resurrection. Number two, immediate paradise. Immediate paradise. We are totally secured. This is another blessing from God. You see, here, the blessing that we have when we die is heaven. Heaven is our eternal destiny. In Luke chapter 23, verse 43, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Kanino niyo po sinabi ito? Di ba, nung si Jesus ay nakapako doon sa krus, meron dalawang kriminal o magnanakaw sa kanyang uh, magkabila. Okay? Yung sa kabila siya ay kinutya. Yung sa kabila naman, sabi niya, Panginoong Yesus, alalahanin mo ako kung ikaw ay andun na sa iyong kaharian. 
And this is what Jesus said to that criminal. Today, sabi niya, truly, I tell you, today, you will be with me in paradise. That's why I said, one of the blessings that we receive because of Christ's death and resurrection is immediate parad paradise. You see, Jesus promised to one of the criminals with him on his side, he said, today you will be with me in paradise or today you will be with me in heaven because that person believed in Jesus Christ. That's why he was assured of heaven and paradise. Yung isa, eh, medyo ininsulto niya ang ating Panginoon Jesus. He did not believe. Okay? So, you will know that he will not go to paradise, but to the other place. And you know that place called hell. Amen? That's why, you know, believers of Jesus Christ know that this is the blessing that awaits us. Okay? Remember, Jesus said today, today, meaning now, ngayon din. Dahil alam niya na that time, oras na lang inaantay at sila'y mamamatay na. Pag namatay tayo, sabi niya, you will be where I will go. You will be with me in paradise. Parang sinasabi niya, kung saan ako pupunta, doon ka rin pupunta. Wow, hallelujah. What a blessing because he believed. Immediate paradise, meaning immediately after a believer dies, immediately that Christian will be ushered to paradise or to heaven. That's our eternal destination. Diba sabi ni Jesus in John chapter 14 verse 3, Jesus said, I am going to prepare a place for you. Okay? I am going to prepare a place for you. Someone said this, the moment you close your eyes and die, immediately, also that moment you will open your eyes in heaven. Okay? Kaya, mga kapatid, ito'y napakagandang pangako sa atin ng Panginoon. Kaya nga, immediately, kapag katapos na tayo'y mabuhay sa mundong ito, ay may nagaantay na lugar sa atin. At yan po ay blessing na binigay sa atin ng Panginoon. Wala ng 40 days here on earth after you die. Okay? Si Jesus lang yun. Because He has to reveal Himself to others that indeed He has resurrected. Okay? That He has risen from the grave. Kaya, si Jesus yun. Kayo, yung iba, okay, ay may mga nagpapadasal pa. Kasi, Yung 40 days pa daw na umiikot yung kanilang kaluluwa dito sa lupa. No, that's not true. Hindi po totoo yan at wala po sa Bible yan. Kaya habang tayo nabubuhay pa dito sa lupa, tayo ay personal nagagawa ng desisyon na manampalataya at tanggapin si Kristo bilang ating Diyos at tagapagligtas dahil hindi natin alam kung kailan darating ang kamatayan. Amen? Kaya kapag nais nating makatiyak, Habang tayo nabubuhay, ay gumawa tayo ng pasya, manampalataya kay Jesus, na si Jesus ang daan, siya ang katotohanan, siya ang buhay, siya lamang ang tanging makapagliligtas sa atin at makapag-akay sa atin doon sa kahariang inihanda niya. Ngayon din, katulad ng isang kriminal sa krus na ito, buhay pa siya, siya ay nagsisi at kumilala kay Jesus at siya ay nanampalataya Kaya siya nakatanggap ng katiyakan kay Jesus. Na sabi niya, ngayon din, sa araw na ito, ay kasama kita sa paraiso. Kailangan pa bang ipanalangin natin ang kanyang kaluluwa para siya pumunta sa paradise? Hindi na. Bakit po? Dahil nung siya ay nanampalataya, siya po ay nakatiyak na ng kaligtasan kay Jesus. Sabi nga ng Acts chapter 16, verse 31, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your family. Sabi sa Hebrews 9.27, Just as man is destined to die once and after that to face judgment. Judgment kaga. Kung ikaw ay nanampalataya kay Jesus, you will go with Him in paradise. 
Kung ikaw ay hindi na nampalataya, hindi ka nanalig, hindi ka kumilala kay Yesus bilang iyong Diyos at tagapagligtas, ikaw ay pupunta sa kabilang dako. At yun po yung tinatawag nating impyerno. Kaya, mga kapatid, if you are listening now, make this personal decision to receive, to accept Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. Mga kapatid, ito ang sabi ni Paul sa 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8. Away from the body and at home with the Lord. The moment you your spirit separates from your body, na pagkatapos na ikaw ay mamatay, mga kapatid, you are home with the Lord in heaven. Amen? The Word of God tells us that when a believer in Christ dies, his spirit or soul goes directly to be with the Lord. Jesus said to that criminal, okay, upon believing, today, today, you will be with me in paradise. As Christian believers, as soon as we leave this earth, we will be with Jesus in heaven. Amen? That's another blessing. Kaya mga kapatid, kaibigan, ngayon pa lang, kailangan nating tanggapin si Jesus, kumilala kay Jesus, bilang ating Diyos at tagapagdiktas. Nais mo bang makatiyak? Manalangin ka. Simple lang. Sabihin mo, Panginoong Jesus, ako'y nananalig at nanampalataya sa iyo. Tinatanggap kita sa aking buhay bilang aking Diyos at tagapagdiktas. Kapatid, kung yan ay pinanalangin mo ng may pananampalataya, nais kong malaman mo na ikaw ay may katiyakan na ikaw ay ligtas at makakasama mo ang Panginoong Yesus doon sa kanyang kahirian pagkatapos ng ating buhay sa mundong ito. Ano pa ang mga blessings na binigay sa atin ng Panginoon sa pamagitan ng kanyang kamatayan at muling pagkabuhay? Another blessing, never forsaken. Never forsaken. This is another blessing the Lord gave us because of His death and resurrection. The Lord will never leave us nor forsake us. Isn't that wonderful? Amen? In Matthew chapter 27, verse 46, the third thing Jesus said on the cross, Sabi doon, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Diyos ko, Diyos ko, bakit mo ako pinabayaan? Okay? Mga kapatid, alam niyo po ba why God forsook Jesus? God forsook Jesus on the cross so that today He will never forsake you. Amen? Mga kapatid, sabi nga doon sa, sa Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5b, God said, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. God told that to Moses to tell the, to tell the Israelites. He also told that to Joshua. And truly, God cared for them. God, you know, provided them of everything. Despite their unbelieving hearts sometimes. Despite their unfaithfulness. God, you know, took care of them. King David also said in Psalm 37, 25, Remember, we are righteous by grace. And he said, I was young and now I am old. Yet I've never seen a righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. Hallelujah. Sabi niya, and now I was young and now I am old. Yet I have never seen a righteous forsaken. Now on the cross, why did Jesus say this? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You know what? At the cross, God, indeed, the Father, turned his back on Jesus because at that very moment when Jesus shouted this, he carried all the sins of the world and the wrath of God was upon him. You see, and at that very moment, God, you know, hindi niya matiis na makita ang kanyang anak at ang galit niya sa kasalanan. 
na kung saan ito ay you know the wrath of God you know burned all the sins upon Jesus body so God pursued Jesus on the cross so that today he will never forsake you and he will never reject you amen in fact his hand reaches you today Jesus is saying to you to you today come to me all of you who are heavy laden and I will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls God is inviting us to him God is saying come to me all of you who are heavy laden and I will give you rest again I will say to you friend salvation is only by grace not by works and by grace he will never forsake us amen you can't do anything to be saved your good works cannot save religion cannot save only Jesus can save you only through a personal relationship with Jesus that you will be saved because salvation is a free gift from him for those who believe Romans chapter 8 says that nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord amen number four another blessing of Christ is constant care amen constant care he cares for you in John chapter 19 verses 26 to 27 Jesus said woman here is your son and to the disciple he said here is your mother did here Jesus is saying you know he's dying on the cross he is concerned so much about his mother about his brother you know as a background here at this time it is believed that Jesus earthly father Joseph had passed away in fact even before he began his three and a half ministry here on earth there was no reference of Joseph in the Bible so well research says that you know Joseph is no longer was no longer around during that time so Jesus entrusted Mary to his brother okay and vice versa parang sinasabi niya ingatan niyo ang isa isa the Lord showed concern for them as he is also concerned for us today while we are here on earth he knows that here on earth this is a, a fallen world you know God is so concerned about us while we are here on earth now this is the truth that we must all learn this resurrection Sunday good news today he is saying to us I care for you the Lord Jesus is saying for us you know I care about your need the Lord Jesus cares for you he cares for your needs he cares for your situation he cares for whatever situation you're in right now even during this pandemic God is not surprised and God is here with us taking care of us you know remember probably without you knowing it but God assigned ministering angels to surround us to stand us guard to help us to protect us to guide us and to meet our needs he constantly cares for you notice that he knows your concern he knows your needs today he knows your situation today he knows what you are going through today he knows your trials your sorrow your sickness he knows your pain physically emotionally you know be assured right now that God knows your situation and he cares for you amen I love you as a testimony probably during this pandemic as a pastor this past month probably is the most challenging month for me 
and maybe for my family. You see, there were challenges, we uh, uh, needs, and uh, I'm in pain. No, we are not contacted with COVID. We ask for God's protection, but we are affected every time we hear someone, a friend, a church member, a family, or a relative, uh, you know, contacted with this virus. And we are, we feel sorry for them. And, you know, I per, I'm personally uh, affected by it that I bring them to the Lord in prayer. There are deadlines to meet, okay? And, you know, it's been a challenging uh, month and weeks for us. But praise God. I thank you for, for praying with us. Thank you for, you're always there, encouraging us, cheering for us. And I praise God for your prayers. You see, but we've never doubted God's constant care for us. He has been faithful. God is meeting our needs. We trusted God for everything. We put everything under His grace. And I tell you what, I don't know what you have been going through right now, but I'd like you to know that God cares for you. Yes, we've been very anxious, but by God's grace, we keep moving forward. We step with God, you know. Kaya, mga kapatid, hindi ko alam ano ang dinadanas mo ngayon. Ano ang dinadaanan mo ngayon. Anong problema man, anong pangailangan. I tell you, you can trust God. You can trust Him every day. If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen, church? 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says, Cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. Friends, what's bothering you today? What is your need? Okay? Yes, many times we don't have all the answers to why things happen. Just keep trusting God. Hindi natin alam kung bakit ito nangyayari o bakit ito nangyayari sa atin. We don't have all the answers. We are at a loss sometimes. But know that God has an answer for every situation. And that saying, God is saying to us, Trust me, my son. Trust me, my daughter. During those times, God is saying to us, Trust me. You know, why? Because God knows. God sees your heart. God sees your faith. And God will make a way for you and for me by His grace. Yes, He will make a way for you. And He will deliver you if you put your trust in the Lord. Be assured that He cares for you. Amen. Church, do you want to be assured of your forgiveness and salvation? Do you want to be assured of eternal life? Do you have a need today? Are you facing a very difficult situation? Are you disturbed by what is happening around you? Jesus said, come to me. Come to me. Come to me. Trust me, my child. Trust me, my son. I know you. I know your heart. Know this blessing is for us because of Christ's death and resurrection. Total forgiveness, immediate paradise, never forsaken, and constant care is what the Lord has for us. Ilan lamang sa mga blessings na binigay at pinagkaloob sa atin ng Panginoon dahil sa kanyang kamatayan at muling pagkabuhay. As we end today, we would like to give you an opportunity to commit your life to Jesus. We would like to give you an opportunity to receive Him and accept Him to be your Lord and Savior. We like to give you an opportunity to come to God with humility and acknowledge Him as your Lord and your Savior. Are you ready? Let's bow our head in a word of prayer. Hallelujah. Pray this prayer right now. You want to be truly committed to Jesus? Say this prayer. Lord Jesus, I commit my whole life to you. Yes, I commit every area of my life to you, Lord. 
I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I commit my work, my studies, my career, my ministry, and my business to you. Lord Jesus, I commit every member of my family. I commit my children, my grandchildren to you. Lord Jesus, I commit my love life to you my lifetime partner lead me and guide me lord by your grace i want to walk seriously and intimately with you i ask you to take full control of my life every day lord thank you thank you that you love me so much that you are fully and eternally committed to us you will take care of us. You will never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you for the forgiveness of our sins. Thank you for the eternal life. Thank you, Lord, that nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen and amen. If you pray that prayer, trusting the Lord, keep walking with the Lord every day. Today, let us now come before the Lord's table and celebrate the Holy Communion. Get your bread and your wine right now and let's partake of the bread. Hallelujah. Hold your bread. The Bible said, in 1 Corinthians, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's pray. Father in heaven, bless this bread now. Lord Jesus, this bread symbolizes your body beaten and broken for me. Your word says that by your stripes, by your wounds, I am healed. I declare health and healing is mine now in Jesus' name. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's pray. Father, bless this cup now. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your shed blood. Thank you that through that blood, you paid the penalty of my sins. Thank you that now I am cleansed and has been forgiven through your sacrifice through your love through your precious blood i have been forgiven and made righteous forever i now receive all the blessings of the righteous including health and healing protection forgiveness complete forgiveness and supernatural favor is mine in Jesus name amen church right now let's come together in prayer let us pray to God let us bring our nation to God right now especially with this COVID-19 will you please join me right now in agreement as we pray specifically for all COVID patient will you let's power ahead let us pray. Let's bring this to the Lord all together. Hallelujah. Our Father in heaven, we humbly lift up to you, our nation, the Philippines. You have chosen us as a Christian nation, especially here in Asia. So Lord, we seek your protection and guidance as our Lord our Savior and our Good Shepherd. 
We ask you, Lord, to heal all COVID patients right now. We ask to let your healing touch be upon those people right now in the hospitals and those who are in their respective homes. Lord, and those who are COVID positive, Lord, touch them, cover them with your precious blood. And those who are negative, Lord, I pray for your covering and protection. I pray, Lord, that you put a stop in this pandemic and have mercy on all of us, your people. We apply the blood of Jesus upon ourselves, upon our family, our homes, our loved ones, our frontliners, our, our military personnel, our streets, our neighbors, our communities, our barangays, our government officials, especially our president, our churches and members, our medical facilities, our economy, our workplace, and others. Lord, cover them with your precious blood. Magnify your name as the name above every name. We pray this with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. Thank you, church. Let the shalom of God be upon you today. Nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. You are protected, you are covered by the blood of Jesus. Go in peace. The Lord be with you. God bless you. And see you again next week.